There's a lot of companies making Meshtastic nodes, but this one is a little bit unique. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I'm filming this the day before we leave for Huntsville. Amazon just dropped a package at my door about 10 minutes ago, and I think it's time to get this node put together so I can give it a test over the next week while we're traveling. There will be a link down below, but for now, let's go ahead and jump over to the workbench and get this thing assembled. So when the guys over at Meshnology reached out and asked me if I wanted to check out one of their mesh nodes, I ended up choosing this one. As you can see in a minute, it's got a pretty unique design. The other reason that I went with this one is because it uses the new Helltech T114 board, and this board is a lot better for battery consumption. My Spec 5 Trekker Delta also uses the 114, and I can get like five, six days out of that device. So I'm hoping this one is going to perform just just as well. This is everything that was included in the box. I think there's going to be a couple of missing components. Maybe not, but we'll see. But let's go ahead and see if we can get this thing going. Now, they do include the GPS module. I don't know that I'm going to use that. I don't really need GPS on this particular device. It'll be connected to my phone and you can always use your phone to send the GPS data to this device. If it was going to be remotely located or something like that, you would probably want the GPS, but in this case, I don't need it. So, let's see what we've got here. Um, looks like a pretty simple install here. Not much more difficult than the ones that we built, uh, or that I built, right before fill day. And uh, in true KM4ACK last minute fashion, I am uh, building this the day we leave, or the day before we leave for Huntsville. So I'm hoping to get this one flashed and ready to go to Huntsville. So we've got the buttons here, just little 3D printed parts, right like that. They're going to drop in those slots right over there. Hopefully you can see that. And bang, they drop right in there. Now we're going to need to get an antenna on here. And I did see in the case they included this guy but i think we can go with something a little bit nicer i'm also not seeing a battery in this kit so let's see if we can find a battery as well let me dig through the junk box i'll be right back all right so i found some extra antennas that i had from this field day build this is the repeater here that i'm going to go ahead and take apart now i'm going to try to hijack the battery out of this case and use it on the new board. We're going to Huntsville. Several other people are already going to be running mesh nodes at a um, elevated location, so I don't really have to worry about putting up a repeater. I believe Digital Rancher is going to be running one that's up, and I believe uh, Jason 2.0 also said he was going to fly one of his nodes on a mast as well. And there we go. Thought I had something held up there. All right, so we got the Helltech board. This is what I'm going to grab out of here. I think, just looking at this, ooh, just barely, maybe. Oh, I think that's going to be perfect. And you know something? With that large of a battery, I'm not sure that GPS node would fit underneath here anyway. So we need to get one of these antennas on that board and we'll connect the battery, get everything dropped in the case. Have I ever mentioned how much I dislike those connectors on these Helltech boards? They're always a pain in the rear end to get on there. All right, we've got that connected here. That's to the uh, opposite side of the screen from the USB connector. We're going to flip it down. I'm not going to make the same mistake I did in the other video. And we're going to drop it in right there. We'll have to figure out exactly where the uh, coax is all going to ride. But there's the board in place. That's super easy. Now let's see if we can just tuck this coax in to this little slot right here. Now the one thing I'm a bit confused by, and I've reviewed the website. Well, I don't like just widen that coax up like that, but that may be the only option I have. I've reviewed their website, and I can't figure out what this little spot is on this side. This side obviously lines up with the USB port. 
This side does not. Looks like it's still cut for a USB port, but you've only got one USB on these boards. Now we need to go ahead and get the battery connected. Oh, you know what? First let's put the antenna on it. Then we'll get the battery connected and go ahead and start putting this back case on it. I see a green light blinking down in there, so that should be a good indication. All right, let's see. exactly how this is going to line up and I believe that's it right there if I don't pinch that coax now we just need to get these screws in it this is pretty sharp the way they do this I'll show you guys in just a second you drop the nut through these slots and then run the screws in from the top I like that and they do include all of the little pieces and parts including if I can get it out of the bag the tool that you need to do this with so and they give you an extra set of buttons right there so let's see if we can't get one of these nuts to drop down in here and go ahead and get that screw started yeah I like that I like the way those screws are are the uh, nuts are kind of captured while you're putting the screws in place so that makes it really nice doing the assembly of it. You will have to be careful when you disassemble, don't forget, or those are going to end up on the ground. And then it's a pretty slick setup when you get it uh, all put together. Let me go ahead and get this finished up. Now I was fully expecting to have to flash this board before I could use it, but looking at it, it looks like we're already on long fast, and I should be able to connect to this HC9E1. Let's go ahead and give that a whirl. So we'll go ahead and scan for new devices. Should come right up for us. And I believe it's going to be that one right on top. That's C9E1. We get a pairing code over here. Let's go ahead and get that thing paired. 594-683. And say OK. And there we go. It is pairing up. And it should drop into the node list. Hasn't seen anything yet, but that takes a little bit of time. But looks like everything is working well. I'm looking forward to giving this thing a trial run while we're in Huntsville. Now, a couple of things to note before we close this out. I am going to have to pull it back apart. The battery is uh, rattling around. And they did include some uh, little foam strips that you can put in here to help reduce that. So I'm going to take this back apart and put those in. I didn't catch it the first time through. The only other thing I would note about this, it does look like it has a lanyard slot right down here on the bottom corner. It does not have any type of belt clip. It'd be nice if this thing had a belt clip so you could attach it to a backpack or even your actual belt. But we'll give it a run while we're in Huntsville. If you guys want to see the follow-ups on this device or others that I've videoed in the past, be sure to subscribe to the newsletter because I do a lot of follow-ups in that newsletter. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.